Here's the thing about Omega though. Now that I'm in it and it's widely available, I almost resent Rolex. I'm almost mad at Rolex. Now, if Rolex all of a sudden had stock everywhere and they were selling at MSRP, maybe, maybe I wouldn't be. I just think it's, I just think it's so arrogant that you can't get a Rolex and they're not doing anything about the authorized dealers and they're not making, they're not making it available to everyone. And I think that's what really ticks me off is if one can go out and afford a Rolex and if you've been saving your whole life and you want to go buy a Rolex and all of a sudden you can't because you haven't purchased a whole bunch of watches from these out authorized dealers, that's wrong. Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Watchman. Here at The Cheap Watchman, we talk about high value timepieces, except for today. We're talking about my personal Omega. Seamaster. I just bought it recently. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about my Omega Seamaster. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Newer channel. I'm trying to get it off the ground. I do have another channel though, and that's there's a story behind this watch and my other channel. When I hit 100,000 subscribers, I decided to buy myself a watch. I like to commemorate big moments in my life by buying a timepiece. I've done it my whole life. And this time, figured I'd just go all the way. And that's why I got this beautiful Omega. The funny thing is, I initially went in and bought a Tissot. I can't remember what the model name is. It's their $700 dive watch. Got it home, wore it around, just wasn't doing it for me. So then I went back and got a long jeans diver and it was pretty expensive i think it was around 1700 dollars or 1300 dollars. i'm wearing it around and it's cool but i'm like you know what if i'm doing this i might as well do it so i went back and i got the omega seamaster instead of course rolex has to come into play now i don't know if a submariner was available at retail pricing if i would have purchased it now granted they're not available but the more that I learned about what's going on with Rolex, the availability issues, and whether or not some of that is actually caused by Rolex, it kind of soured me on the brand itself. I do have an Air King. Love that watch. It was given to me by my father. Going all the way back to 2005, I had considered purchasing a Rolex. I just didn't have the funds at the time. So the Submariner was always kind of like my aspirational piece. And when that wasn't available and learning what I learned about Rolex, you know what became my aspirational piece? This one. And I have it in my hand right now. So let's take a closer look at the Omega Seamaster. So this is the one I got. It's the black one, black dial, black bezel insert on a black rubber strap. Now the reason why I got this one is, well, simply because Number one, it was cheaper, but number two, I don't really like their stainless steel bands. I don't like the shiny bits that go down. So I just got this one instead. I mean, bonus. It's cheaper and I like it better. So if we're looking at the dial, you can see on the dial the wavy lines and you can also see the handset. The hands, and it doesn't really come through on video as much, but the handset is spectacular it really is something that you appreciate more in person than you do through pictures or video or things like that the handset comes up with two posts and then a triangle sitting on top of the minute hand and a circle sitting on top of the hour hand and the loom is absolutely fantastic the second hand if you take a look at it has a lollipop style with a long counterweight and then a red long needle tip and it's just so awesome double batons at 12 o'clock single baton at three and nine and then the date window down at the bottom at the six o'clock position with a little a little baton that is horizontal and then a color matched date wheel down at the bottom of course on the top you have the omega seamaster professional and then underneath the pinion, you have the coaxial master chronometer 
and then 300 meters, 1,000 feet. And if you really look close, you can see that ZRO2 right down there. Looking at the case, this is more of a brushed case. There's not a lot of high polish areas on this case. And I really like that in what I would consider to be a tool watch. There is some high polish when it goes from the side of the case to the top of the case. But for the most part, this is an all brushed watch. And I really like that because I'm not a super flashy guy, even though this could be considered by some to be a flashy watch, but it really comes off as a sports watch, especially with the rubber strap. The crown over here is well done, has the Omega logo on the side, has a lot of knurling, easy to get a hold of. My hands aren't the smallest things on the planet. Threads out, very nice click. Pull it out to the first position, that changes the date. Second position changes the time. This is, of course, a hacking movement. Push it back in, and then you can kind of tell how good a watch is simply by how much you have to finagle the crown to get it screwed back in. And then one of the most, I wouldn't say controversial, uh, something that you're going to love or you hate or you really don't care all that much about it, and I don't really care, is the helium escape valve right here. Of course, most people are never going to use this function. Most people probably are never going to use this watch to dive, period. The strap on here is a fitted rubber strap. And if I do have one gripe about this watch, it is the fitted rubber strap because it doesn't fit my wrist all that well. And when you size it up to your wrist, when you, when you put it in, it doesn't feel super natural. So you kind of have to insert it here at the bottom and then pull it back out to set the size. But as you can see here, very nice Omega logo here on the clasp. So really the only complaint I have about this watch is the strap and not really the strap, but how the strap interfaces with the clasp. The rear of the case, just gorgeous. I mean, when we're looking at the rear of this case and you have the Diver 300, the 1000 feet 300M here at the bottom, and then you look at the finishing on this movement, Omega Master Coaxial 8800, it's just something else. And it's done in a way that you can really appreciate the craftsmanship that went into this thing but it also doesn't come off as ostentatious at all. It still comes off as a usable, you can beat this watch up, take it to the beach, do get get on the table saw with this thing, not put it in the table saw, but you know, cut some wood and it still feels so premium yet so usable and really tough looking. Like this is a very masculine watch and even the premium finishing comes off in a masculine way. And I just get the biggest kick out of it. And frankly, the more I've had this watch, the more I know I made the right choice because I probably could have found a used Submariner somewhere, I don't know, for eight grand or 10 grand or whatever from 1991. But it's kind of like when, I ha when I've had this Omega on my wrist and I've lived with it a little bit, I've made the right choice. The loom on here is spectacular. The contrast between the hour markers, the five minute markers, and the handset, spectacular. And it's a big watch. So this is a comes in around 42 and a half millimeters, I believe. Where's big? I have a seven and a half inch wrist. So some 39 and 40 millimeters are a bit small on me. This Omega seems to kind of be like in the really Goldilocks zone as far as my wrist size. It's just perfect. It's just perfect. The thickness on here, it's not a skinny watch, but again, the way that it lays on my wrist is perfect. So even if you have a smaller wrist, it kind of hugs down. So I think you're be, I think you're going to be able to get away with this bezel insert is ceramic and the bezel action is really good. Around the side of the bezel, it's kind of cut out here, but it's not it's not super grippy. There's not a lot. The, 
I guess what I'm trying to say is the finishing on here is more smooth than it is grippy. So there's no coin edge bezel or anything like that on here. But the action is everything you'd think it should be at this price. Lines up, of course, perfectly and no back play. No, no bounce in here, really flat. The interesting thing is though the loom around the bezel, the markers around the bezel insert are not loomed. And I have a lot of cheaper watches that have ceramic bezel inserts that do have loom and they look great. But it's one of those things where these higher end watches don't always have the features that some of the lower end watches have. Even my Rolex um, Air King has a stamped clasp. So sometimes the things that I'm looking at as far as a feature set, they just don't exist on higher end watches, but guess what? I don't care. I love wearing this thing. Absolutely love, love, love this watch. The one thing I love about it is when I made the decision to get it, I just went down and I had multiple Seamasters to choose from. I like the 300 meter professional because it does have that dive aesthetic. There's also the Planet Ocean, which is, mm, that's yummy too even more expensive than the 300 meter professional. A lot of choices from Omega. I think they're all great choices. I think this watch is spectacular. I think maybe Omega is Omega is known more for the Moon Watch, of course, the Speedmaster. There's something about the Speedmaster shape that it doesn't resonate with me. This watch resonated with me and continues to resonate almost daily. To the point where I'm looking at the blue variants, the one that James Bond wore. Mm, yeah. Actually, there's a limited edition James Bond. It's pretty cool looking too. It's very expensive though. The blue versions you can find on eBay and some other places for less than $3,000. So that's kind of been a, mm, maybe should I do that? Probably not. I don't need it. Maybe I should look at something from another brand. Here's the thing about Omega though. Now that I'm in it and it's widely available. I almost resent Rolex. I'm almost mad at Rolex. Now, if Rolex all of a sudden had stock everywhere and they were selling at MSRP, maybe, maybe I wouldn't be. I just think it's, I just think it's so arrogant that you can't get a Rolex and they're not doing anything about the authorized dealers and they're not making, they're not making it available to everyone. And I think that's what really ticks me off is if one can go out and afford a Rolex and if you've been saving your whole life and you want to go buy a Rolex and all of a sudden you can't because you haven't purchased a whole bunch of watches from these out authorized dealers, that's wrong. That's arrogant. And that's frankly unfair to people that have the same amount of money as other people, but because they haven't bought 30 other pieces of jewelry, they don't get a chance to go get the watch that they've been saving up for the entire life. Well, you know what? You can do that with Omega. And because of that, I love Omega now. Even more than I did before. Even, even in the past when the Omega was an aspirational watch, now I love it more. Because anybody can go get an Omega today. And that's the way it should be. So, sorry, got a little excited there at the end. Anyway, I love this watch. Love, love, love this watch. Not only is it a fantastic watch, perfect watch, on par, probably beats the Submariner in specs and in performance, but it symbolizes something for me that is a big deal in my life. And that's when I went over 100,000 subscribers on my other channel, The Cheap Audio Man. By the way, we are giving a watch away on this channel. Links in the description, it's the Spinnaker watch. So you can go over, take a look at that video, learn how to sign up for the giveaway and maybe get a free watch. There hasn't been a ton of people sign up for it. Also follow me on Instagram, Cheap Watchman over on Instagram. A lot of fun. You can also check out my Hi-Fi channel, Cheap Audio Man. So don't go out and spend a bunch of money on a watch that you can't afford. Buy something you can and enjoy every minute of it. And with that, I'm Randy, I'm the Cheap Watchman. Thank you.